thank you very much for the kind introduction. Uh, I would like to, and I would like to also thank the Academy and the organizers for the invitation to give this brief presentation at this meeting. I will first share my screen with you so that I can illustrate my presentation with some of the, some of the slides. And I hope you can all see it now. So basically, um, yeah, I, I think that one of the major challenges that we have in addition to the, to the tragic COVID pandemic is the climate change crisis and the digitalization challenge. So I'm really happy that that's the topic of our meeting. So the digital pathway to net zero, and I will try to address the question of what kind of disruptive innovations and behaviors would be re required. And I'll explain a little bit later what I mean by fit for 55. But before we think about the future in which direction the human development could evolve, I think it's, it's useful to look at the past. So the first slide I would like to share with you shows the Stockton Darlington Steam Railway from 1826, almost 200 years ago. And I would argue that this marks the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, a huge change in, in businesses and the lifestyles through the convergence of steam, steel, railways, later on uh, telegraphs, and many other technologies that powered the Industrial Revolution. Um, and I would argue also that, at least in Europe, uh, the beginning of the Industrial Revolution was caused by a crisis. Uh, there was a big wood, wood scarcity and going to the underground forest through the coal resolved that issue and to a large extent uh, replaced the human and animal muscle power. So that was a huge change, a huge revolution. Um, and about 30, 40 years later, these technologies became really dominant. And I would argue that the next revolution was then uh, the beginning of the petrochemicals, uh, beginning of the automobile, electricity, and so on. And I think this picture that some of you might have seen really illustrates this very well. On the left, you have the Easter Parade in New York City in 1900. And if you can discern on the picture, every, it's only horses and carriages. And 13 years later, in 1913, on the right, it's only motor vehicles. In fact, the replacement of horses and carriages by automobiles took about 30 years in most of the countries around the world. And I would argue marks a really disruptive change that was then followed during the last 50 years or so with what some people call the great acceleration. So that's the third thing I would like to share with you. Since we are talking about the climate crisis, um, this picture illustrates the last 20,000 years of the global mean temperature. And the last 10,000 years, the, 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 the period in the Earth development called the Holocene, I think also marks a beginning of relatively constant temperature. The Mother Earth was very kind to humanity. You can see that it did not vary very much about plus or minus half a degree or so, and allowed the humanity to settle down and develop the agriculture. But beginning 1826, if you're going to choose a particular date, you have the, you see the hockey stick, the, uh, the uh, uh, increase in the global mean temperature since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, and now it's about about one degree Celsius. So we are not very far from the Paris range that was agreed upon in 2015, if possible to go down to one and a half degrees Celsius. So not, there is not that much to go and probably by 20, 2040, in any case, we would be there. Now, there are many tipping elements in the earth system and societies that are threatened already today. And I will not spend too much time. These are all very brief presentations, but let me just focus on these five. West Antarctic ice sheet, Greenland, summer Arctic ice, alpine glaciers, and coral reefs, they're all threatened by the already at the current temperature increase. So we are facing, this is why I think climate crisis is the appropriate term. And um, there are a number of scenarios, as you can see on the right, uh, that look at this future temperature range, but the green ones indicate that it is indeed possible um, to stabilize at the Paris range, but we would need radical changes in the lifestyle and the businesses and entrepreneurship. So the next thing I would like to share with you are the 17 sustainable development goals of the United Nations, also agreed upon in 2015 by all nations. 
and it's 169 targets. And I like this picture, it's a little bit unorderly. I think, it, at least in my mind, illustrating that this is a holistic agenda. These goals are not separate, but there it's a very complex agenda. So in the world in 2050, and Jeff was uh, one of Mr. the leaders who will join us later, um, uh, we have reduced that to six major transformations on the way forward. Now, now I come to explain what I mean by 50, 50, fit for 55. Uh, Europe, one and a half years ago, Europe has uh, approved the European Green Deal. And now on the 14th of July, a fit for 55 package illustrated here, a reduction of emissions across Europe by 2030 by 55% toward net zero by the middle of the century. So this is a heroic agenda requiring huge changes uh, in the businesses, lifestyles, as is our title, but in our society in general. Um, now, one of the important components of going there to net zero by mid-century and many other countries, United States, have also committed to China by 2060 and so on. One of the ways is to the development of the new technologies, businesses, and lifestyles. And I think that goes together. This shows learning curves. On um, the vertical axis is a, uh, a unit cost, let's say dollars per kilowatt. And on the horizontal scale are the global shipments of particular technologies. Now, that without going into the details, the yellow curve highlighted here with the red line indicates the cost reductions of the photovoltaics basically two orders of magnitude since the beginning. Uh, and the cost reductions about 20% for doubling of the global capacity and many other technologies are in that range. Uh, nuclear might be a big exception uh, where in France and US the costs have been increasing. Uh, so one way of achieving these changes in lifestyles and entrepreneurship is through the diffusion of the new technology. So let me show you another example. Uh, this example shows on the vertical scale the learning rate or experience improvement in percentage per doubling of the capacity and the, and the capacity as a proxy for learning is, is shown on the horizontal scale. Now, without going into the details, the point is that many of these technologies plotted here that can be characterized as being granular, small scale that can be replicated many times in an evolutionary sense. As you can see, many of them are, have the learning rates in the order of 20 to 30% per doubling of the capacity. There are some supply technologies that are also in that range, right? photovoltaics, wind turbines, heat pumps, and so on. So there is a wide range of technologies that at least historically has achieved very high learning rates uh, through the small scale and ability to replicate them many times. So I would argue that's also the way forward. Um, and let me give you a historical example again, mobile phones. What you see in the middle are a number of analog technologies and the amount of energy that they would re they require, about 550 watts. Now, 30 years ago, Motorola introduced the first GSM phone and today we have smartphones and essentially everybody in the world has a smartphone, including unfortunately almost a billion people who do not have access to electricity. But note, that it is 100 times more efficient than the devices it replaced. That means also 100 times less emissions with the, with the same level of use. But not only that, also 25 times less embedded energy to produce a, a smartphone and the materials. So this illustrates that over the last 30 years, a huge improvement has occurred in these technologies and has improved also the service provided. So that's basically the argument that I'm trying to pose to you, that the convergence of digital technologies, just like the convergence of steam, coal, railways, telegraphs 200 years ago, uh, that the convergence of new technologies illustrated here, a number of candidate technologies that are already being developed and diffusing, that that could produce a next revolution. And that's why I call it the digital revolution. Now, we don't know exactly the nature of that revolution, but I would like to indicate to you, share with you some ideas on, on the way forward of these technologies as they combine. Let me also say they need to combine with the current systems as well. That's clear. Now, here are some examples. These are just illustrative examples, not a comprehensive list. Uh, for example, um, going from ownership to usership, 
uh, digi digi digitalization would allow that, uh, sharing the cars, uh, sharing bikes, uh, sharing transport system in general on top in blue. Uh, then we have peer-to-peer -peer technologies that could be very powerful and their com combination for starting from homes to goods, but also electricity on the bottom in yellow, and then the integration in the whole systems like a demand response or time of use pricing, and that could go to mobility, not just energy in many, many, many sectors. So some of these technologies would be associated with fundamentally new lifestyles so, and, and new business models. And I think this is the, the, the power, the potential power of digitalization. But let me also say there are also challenges. I mean, think of privacy, uh, think of autonomous weapons. I mean, that scares me the most. Uh, so social steering of these technologies is really important if they're going to bring the next quantum leap in the human development. But that has happened before. And uh, I, I like this illustration because it shows in periods of about 50 years how radically some of our end use technologies have changed from railways, flying machines in the middle is communication, then individual mobility and below industrial processes. Now, radical change in periods of 50 years, but I think what is really important to, to observe is the vertical, that all of these technologies, lifestyles, entrepreneurial models combine into the systems. Now, of course, nobody of us knows what will be by 2050 when the world hopefully becomes climate neutral, but here are some candidates from my point of view, superconducting electricity, uh, hydrogen, maglevs, magnetic levitation trains, electric hydrogen aircraft. This could be all starting to develop in those days um, without going into the details. What really puzzles me is how that's going to combine into the new business models and behaviors. So let me then come slowly to the conclusion. In the world in 2050, and you can download our reports above from the website you see, twi2050.com, uh, we have conceived of this transformation as an S, S, S form curve, uh, because legitimacy of business as usual is clearly eroding. There are many actors of change and many countries are now pursuing this transformation and to follow the vision of sustainable future. I would argue that 2030 agenda is the first first move in that direction and eventually by middle of the century if the world hopefully becomes car carbon neutral we would be well underway to this transformation and hopefully also not leaving anybody behind this is really important in my view and digitalization and your behaviors would play a very important role so i dare to also argue that this might lead to new values and norms uh, new morality and perhaps even ethics uh, so fundamental changes in the human society. And for that, we need social steering on the way forward. Uh, so this was our vision of how this might occur. Um, and it would constitute a true revolution with digitalization playing a very important role. So I would like to come to a conclusion uh, to show you, I mean, this is all hypothetical, but three possible diffusion waves or spread of the digital technologies um, for achieving net zero, we will need digitalization for sustainability in many areas. Afterwards, uh, sustainable digital societies might be emerging. And who knows, in the long run, just like as a consequence of the Industrial Revolution, we might be also improving and bettering ourselves. So for the lack of better word, I use the notion of homo digitalis. So basically, this is the, the short story I wanted to share with you. Please look at some of our reports or send me an email if there are questions. The penultimate report was on digitalization and the last one on innovations for sustainability. So I would like to close here my brief presentation. I'll stop sharing the screen. Thank you very much.